when we introduced the periodic table, we talked about how Mendeleev said, hey, maybe I shouldn't just put these all in one big long line by how massive they are. I need to also stack them up according to things that have similar properties. Now, this is a property that he didn't even know about at the time, but it turns out it follows along in the periodic table just the way he would have liked to have seen. So this periodic trend is about atomic radii. It is not really a surprise that as you go down the table, things get bigger. This makes perfect sense to us because we keep adding protons and electrons, so why wouldn't it get bigger? Perfect sense. I like this. This drink, I like it. Another! Now, here's the weird thing. As we go across, even though we're adding protons and electrons, they actually get smaller. Wait, what? This is where things start to get a little weird. You know, it's not what you expected at all. You expected, oh, it's gonna get bigger as we add things. But what's going on this way, which is the way that makes sense, is we keep adding more energy levels, right? As we go across, we're staying in the same energy level the same period, we keep adding protons and electrons. One's positive, the other's negative, and opposites attract. So these things are actually pulling themselves in tighter because there's more electrostatic force between them. Okay, so this is the first trend that you should try to memorize, that atomic radius goes higher as you go down the chart. That one makes sense but atomic radius gets smaller as you go across the chart. That's the strange one. Now, you might notice it says trend. It doesn't mean it's exactly perfect all the time. If we look very closely in the table, we will find a few where we were expecting things to get smaller and they actually got bigger. Oh dear. Well, it's not a lot. You know, 140 up to 143, and then it goes back down again. Here's another one, though. 150 up to 167, then it goes back down. So these are not perfect examples. You can find some oddball ones that do not follow the trend. It's a trend doesn't mean it's perfect and exact. We mentioned how the trends run for neutral atoms. It turns out the trends also apply to ions. So we have to talk about the different ions. The positive ions, that is the cations, are formed when you lose electrons. Since electrons are negative, minus a minus is a plus, and so you have a positive ion. This cation then will have a different size. You've lost an electron. It's not specifically because you lost an electron that it shrinks, but more because you still have, in this case of sodium, you still have 11 protons and where they had to pull 11 electrons towards them, now they only have to pull 10 towards them. And so they're more effective at pulling them in closer to themselves. For an analogy, you might think of parents at a playground with children. If you have 11 parents and 11 children, there's a certain amount of connectedness between that, that grouping keeps the kids from running out of the street or whatever, all right? But if there are 11 parents and 10 children, they're even more capable of keeping them here, stay at the swing set, you know, <laughs> things like that. And, you know, here on the side note, if you have a calcium atom, it will be losing two electrons, becoming a doubly charged calcium ion, and it would shrink even further. We can also talk about the anions, the negative ions, and they are going to pick up an extra electron. That's how they become a negative ion. Well, that's going to make sure that you have more electrons than protons. And that will end up increasing the size. This fluorine, for example, had nine protons and it had a certain size. Now there's one more electron than that and it becomes a bigger ion. Again, if you go with that analogy, we used to have nine parents and nine children. Now you have nine parents and ten children. Even if every parent is specifically looking after one child, there's one child that's able to 
get away, start running around further than anybody wanted them to. So this is this is an analogy to help you remember that from the previous slide, the cations become smaller than the original atom and the anions become larger than the original atom. Needless to say, if you have something like oxygen, which has picked up two electrons, it's going to have two extra electrons compared to the protons and will grow even larger. All in all then, we come up with periodic trends, but we have to separate them into two sections. We can talk about the anions, and you can see that these anions are going to decrease in size as you go across, mostly because nitrogen here, this column, these have three extra electrons compared to two extra compared to one extra. So this largeness is because there are so many electrons that are not being well controlled, shall we say, by the protons that are left in the nucleus. And then we can go and look at the other ones, the cations, the positive ions, and we see the same thing. It still gets smaller as you go across the period. Why? Because here you had one more proton than electrons. By the time you get over here, you have three more protons than electrons. It continues to create more and more control, keeping those electrons close. Increasing down a group is really no surprise. You just have a larger grouping and it was larger to begin with, so why wouldn't the ion also be larger? Here we see the idea that whenever we're talking about the positive ions, that they are smaller than their original neutral atom. That's true on all of these. And when we look at the anions, we see that they become larger than their original atom. What else do I want to say about that? You can do some extra analysis because you can go back to that idea of the isoelectronic stuff, okay? For example, the lithium, which had three protons. If we're looking at lithium as an ion, now it's got three protons, but only two electrons. So we can see that there's fewer that have to be reined in, and we can see that it's going to get smaller. We can also look at uh, the isoelectronic thing. We can look at this sodium. So the sodium with a positive charge, that's going to be isoelectronic with neon. So would aluminum with a plus three charge. It's going to be isoelectronic with neon. They're both going to be pulling on 10 electrons. Isoelectronic, right? This one's doing it with 11 protons. This one's doing it with 13 protons, and that makes it more effective. Sodium with a plus charge is going to have 11 protons, and the aluminum with the plus three charge also has this situation. I see that the size is like this, and you can see that they both have 10 electrons. So 13 protons turn pulling on 10 electrons will pull it in tighter than 11 protons pulling on 10 electrons. You can also then go and look at oxygen as a minus two charge and fluorine with a single minus charge. And you're going to find out that this is true. We're talking here about having eight protons and this one having nine protons, and both of them have 10 electrons again, isoelectronic with neon. So eight protons pulling on 10 electrons is not going to be as effective as nine protons pulling on 10 electrons, so it will end up being bigger than this one. And then lastly, just to reemphasize, your negative ions are always larger than the neutral atom. The neutral atom is always larger than the positive ions. And remember, these are called anions and these are called cations.